Hello guys, it's Masha, welcome back. Today I'm gonna show you how to use preserved lemons to flavor a really creamy vegan cauliflower pasta. And I'll also show you how to actually make preserved lemons since I'm running pretty low on my batch and need to make more. And I already have a pretty in-depth video on how to make preserved lemons and I'll link it up here, but I thought it would be helpful to revisit the process and include it in here since I'll be making the batch anyway. So the beauty of preserved lemons is that they're incredibly easy to make and you don't need a recipe or anything. You just need to know the basic technique. So what you'll need is organic unwaxed lemons because you'll actually be eating the rind when they're finished and we obviously don't want to be eating any wax or pesticides in the rind. You'll also need some salt. So I use sea salt. You can also use kosher salt for this. And then optionally, you can also include some aromatics. I'm gonna add some bay leaves, but you can also do things like peppercorns, dried chilies, cinnamon sticks, or herbs like uh, fresh rosemary or thyme. Or you can totally leave out the aromatics and just have plain preserved lemons. And you'll also need a clean glass jar, preferably with a glass top. And I'll link this jar down below. Um, so I like the glass top because the salt tends to corrode any metal jars and they can get rusty or they can actually get holes in them, believe it or not. So that's why I like the glass jars. All right, so let's get started on preserving our lemons. So first what you wanna do is cut off the stem end of the lemon to make a flat base. And the stem end is basically where the lemon was attached to the branch. So we're gonna trim that off. And that way we have this flat base here so that the lemon can stand up steadily. And then the next step is to cut across into the lemon that goes almost all the way through, but not quite, so that it still stays together. So that the lemon opens up just like this. And we're gonna keep going with the rest of the lemons. So just cut off the bottom and then cut in the cross. So the reason why I love preserved lemons so much is because they're just such a magical flavor bomb ingredient. Think of their flavor as a really bright, salty, citrusy lemon concentrate. And preserved lemons really are able to elevate so many dishes. When you add them to your cooking, they make it taste more complex, more like restaurant food which is always a bonus. And you can use them a million different ways. You can use them in sauces and dressings and soups and stews. You can use them to flavor grains, pasta like we'll be doing today, or even drinks. People use them on cocktails. Okay, so I've cut across in all my lemons. And the next step is to pack salt into each lemon. And what you wanna do is basically aim to pack in about one tablespoon of salt per lemon. So I have a tablespoon measure here in my salt bowl and I'm literally gonna pack the salt in. Now you don't have to worry about being precise here at all, but just know that it's basically impossible to have too much salt. And then what we're gonna do is transfer the lemon to our jar and we're gonna start packing it down and making it release its juices. So you can use your hand here, it might also be Helpful to use a tamper, like this is from my juicer. You could also use like a cocktail muddler, something like that. And press down on it really, really well to make it release as much juice as possible. Our ultimate goal is to have all of the lemons packed in really tightly and to have them all submerged in the lemon juice. All right, so this one looks good to me. So I'm gonna continue with the next one. About one tablespoon of the salt. Don't worry if some of the salt spills out of the lemon, we're gonna use it all up in the end. And then into the jar again. These are nice and juicy. And the science behind how all of this works is that the salt basically prevents any harmful bacteria from growing in the jar while beneficial bacteria are still able to grow. And preserved lemons are in fact lacto-fermented, which also means that they're probiotic, which is always a bonus. And then once you get to almost the top of your jar, 
you might not be able to fit in a whole lemon. What you might need to do in order to have the jar nicely packed is cut your remaining lemons into halves or quarters and then get the salt on them. You can scoop up the salt from your working area and then get more salt on this way and then just pack them into the corners that don't have any lemons in them. That way we'll have all of the real estate of the jar filled up. So I think I need about one more lemon quarter here. So I'm gonna get on as much salt as possible. And this is a pretty messy activity, but super easy and the flavor is really, really worth it. So this looks pretty nice and full to me. I'm gonna put in my bay leaves. And if you're using peppercorns or a cinnamon stick or something like that, put them in when the jar is filled up about halfway. That will be much easier. And so once our jar is full, what we wanna do is top it off with yet more salt. First, I'm gonna scoop up all the salt from the cutting board that fell through. And then I'm gonna add a little more and now what we want to do is we want to seal the jar and test it and see if all the lemons are in fact submerged in the lemon juice because that's crucial. Okay, so that's sealed. And then what you want to do is kind of turn the jar upside down a few times just to let any air pockets out and to really see if everything is nice and submerged. So this is looking pretty good to me actually, but just to be safe and if your lemons are not submerged what you want to do is take the lid back off and then take another lemon and just squeeze a little more lemon juice over top and now we're going to seal it back up perfect so now i'm just going to rinse off the jar get all the salt and lemon juice off of it and clean this up. And so now all you have to do is just leave this jar to sit in a cool and dim place for about a month and you can shake the jar periodically just to redistribute the salt. And then when the lemons are done, the rind should be soft and its texture should be almost jelly-like and the smell should be super pleasant, concentrated, citrusy and really bright. And then from there, you can just place the jar in the fridge and take out as much lemon as you need for whatever you're cooking. Some people scrape the pith off and just use the rind. I tend to use the whole thing. Obviously pick out any seeds and don't include those in what you're cooking. I like to go a step further and puree my preserved lemons into a paste, which is what this is. This is my batch from last winter. And pureeing them into this paste just makes them much easier to use because you can just scoop out as much as you need. You don't need to pick out the seeds because that's already been done. You don't need to mince them. You already have a very ready to go ingredient. So I like to do that. And an idea I had since these guys are gonna be ready right around mid-December is that I might actually puree them, put them into smaller jars and include them in holiday gifts. I really love giving little edible gifts and I think that would make a really lovely little gift component. And now I wanna show you how to actually use the preserved lemon paste to make a really delicious creamy cauliflower pasta. The preserved lemons work super well in pasta and I really like them with cauliflower and with a creamy sauce. So I've got two medium heads of cauliflower here. You can also use one really large head. I have the oven preheating to 400 Fahrenheit, 200 Celsius, and I'm gonna start cutting the cauliflower into florets. I like to include the little cauliflower leaves when I'm roasting cauliflower because they get really crispy and caramelized and delicious. And you don't want super big florets, you want just kind of bite-sized. So how I like to do it is I, I like to cut off natural florets of the core and then cut them into smaller pieces if needed. And I'm gonna transfer the florets to a parchment covered baking sheet. And a bench scraper is so good for transferring stuff so you can scoop up a bunch of the ingredients and i'll link the one i have down below and now i'm going to drizzle my cauliflower with some olive oil you can use a different cooking oil if you prefer like an avocado oil some salt and some black pepper 
I'm gonna mix it all up. And I'm gonna put this in the oven and roast for about 35 to 40 minutes. We want the cauliflower to be super cooked through and caramelized. I get really, really sad when I order something with cauliflower in restaurants and it's served half raw and not cooked through because caramelized cauliflower is so delicious and I don't think that half cooked cauliflower is half as good. And while that's roasting, we're gonna work on building our creamy sauce. So I have two shallots and I'm gonna slice them, peel them first and slice them into rings. Also gonna mince up some garlic, about four cloves. And I'm gonna measure out about a third of a cup of raisins and they're gonna give us a little sweetness and they're gonna counteract the savory flavors and go really well with the brightness of the preserved lemon. If you have golden raisins, definitely use them here. That would be delicious. I couldn't find any, so I'm using regular ones. And then lastly, we're gonna make the creamy component for the sauce. So I'm gonna combine a quarter cup of cashews with a half a cup of water in my blender. And if you don't have a super high speed blender, then you can soak the cashews in hot water for about 15 to 20 minutes and that should really soften them up and allow your blender to really process them well. But with a high speed blender, you don't need to soak the cashews. And I'm gonna blend this on high until we have a nice cashew cream. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm gonna set a pot of really well salted water to boil for the pasta. And today I'll be using rigatoni because I think the shape goes well with everything else. And what I like to do is I like to note how long the particular pasta that I'm cooking takes to cook. So this one takes eight to 10 minutes and I take mental note of that. And I know that when the cauliflower and the sauce have around eight to 10 minutes left, I can pop in the pasta and that way everything is done at the same time. And we're ready to start assembling our sauce. And yes, I did get a new burner. If you saw my last video where I make apple pie, you would have seen that I ruined my burner by making pumpkin caramel. I was on my phone, not paying attention. The whole thing boiled over. I think there's still some caramel on the floor actually. So I got a brand new one. I'm gonna heat it to a medium heat. Put a large skillet to heat. So the skillet is nice and heated up to a medium heat. I'm gonna add some olive oil, enough to gener generously coat the bottom of the pan. Let that heat up and then I'm gonna add the shallots. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and saute these guys for about five minutes until they're nice and soft and translucent. The shallots are nice and soft and I'm gonna add a pinch of chili flakes, the garlic, and a tablespoon of the preserved lemon paste. Mix this in. And then once the garlic is nice and fragrant, I'm gonna add in the raisins and let them plump up in here. And the thing to remember when cooking with preserved lemons is that they are very salty. So whatever you're cooking, just add a little less salt than you normally would since the preserved lemons are gonna bring a bunch of saltiness. And we really wanna see the raisins take on the oil and all the juices and get nice and plump. And the pasta is going in. The cauliflower is done. See how it's nice and caramelized? That's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna add the cauliflower to the skillet. Make a little sling with the parchment paper. Now I'm gonna add in the cashew cream. Gonna get it nice and incorporated. And then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna save a bunch of the starchy pasta water, which is gonna help us thicken up the sauce more. It's gonna help the sauce stick to the pasta. So I'm gonna save to be safe, I like to save about two cups. We don't have to use it all. And then lastly, I'm gonna add in some spinach. Wilt it in. You could do other greens, you could do kale or chard. You would just need to 
uh, cook them a little longer. But this is nice just for a little hint of green. Add a little splash of the water to help the spinach wilt. Drain the pasta. And I'm gonna add it to our pan. I'm gonna start mixing in the pasta to incorporate it with the sauce. And this is when we're gonna start adding little splashes of our starchy pasta water that we saved. And that's really gonna help thin out the sauce and make it nice and creamy and make everything stick to the pasta. Gonna add another splash. And usually the rule with pasta is you want the sauce on the thinner side because once you serve it, it will seize up on the plate a little bit. So it will thicken up with time. But this is looking great. All right, so the pasta is done and I'm gonna serve. Looks amazing. So good. I give it a taste. Make sure to get all the elements. Mm. Mm -hmm. The brightness of the preserved lemons counteracts the whole creamy, starchy pasta situation so well. And then there's also the little bursts of sweet raisins. It's so good. And that's it. So this is just one way to use preserved lemons. They're super versatile, like I said delicious and so many things so I hope you guys will try to make them and I hope that you'll try this pasta. I'll put the recipe in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.